Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, and I'm well informed. If you're wondering how to keep a Tesla pearly white looking its best self, or if you've been lucky enough to see any of my Tesla videos from the last 21 months and you've wondered how I've kept it clean or maintained the pearly white Tesla, well, truth be out, if I'm honest, it's nothing entirely special. All I do is follow a simple step-by-step -step procedure that I learned from YouTube, and admittedly, I made some changes along the way with some successful product swaps and to be honest it doesn't matter what car you own today, heck I started practicing this method and different products on my old red Seat Leon. So I'm no expert, just your average Joe. Ok, average Adam, but my point is washing your own car is going to be a hell of a lot more beneficial than dropping into your average car wash down the end of the road, whereby speed is clearly a priority over the quality of the clean. If you're waiting or you've just purchased your Tesla Model 3 or Tesla Model Y, I can only imagine the pain or emotional damage if the quickie car wash down the road ended up with a few micro scratches or swell marks. In my experience, the quick and fast method isn't always king, despite it feeling like the right thing to do, especially if you're capable and had the time to do it yourself at a slower pace. I mean, the best way would be to hire a professional detailer but whether you are tight with money like me, or just take satisfaction in cleaning dirty things with good results, also like me, you've come to the right place. I'll be laying out my entire method, master plan, call it what you like, but this is what I do every couple of weeks to clean my Tesla Model 3, and in the meantime, I appreciate it if you give the video a cheeky like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you're interested in Tesla and EV content weekly, hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when a video goes live. So Adam, What's your dirty secret? All right, I'll come clean. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh boy, I need to get out more. So hopefully you've seen the condition and the state of the car. I know I literally just said that I do this every couple of weeks, but that timing isn't scheduled or routine, but more of a moving target. For example, this is probably four weeks worth of dirt and exacerbated by the most recent road trip that I took. And this is probably why I have a lovely caking of bugs together with cobwebs and dry dirt along the side and the rear of the car. I initially took this trip when we had the heat wave a few weeks ago, so whilst this isn't the grit and skid marks that you'd see from off-roading or just general winter driving, it's definitely representable of summer pickup around here in the UK. But this step-by-step -step procedure should work all year round and get you results like this. Hopefully you like that transition and so we can move on to how I got into this end position. And I did this all by myself, feet a small cameo for my son who just desperately wanted to help. So step one, start right by getting the essential foundation in place by utilizing a two bucket process as standard. The reason why and the importance will become more evident in the third step, but it's important to have two buckets. Here I am even using an old mop bucket as my second bucket. If you don't have a second bucket lying around, you know, go ahead and buy a second one. So I start by squirting a generous amount of Meguiar's Gold Class shampoo and conditioner into one bucket, fill that with some lukewarm water and a second bucket with just lukewarm water on its own. I also have a new Meguiar's mitt and this will be soaking up in the shampoo bucket and my old mitt that I reserve in the warm water only bucket. The importance of this mitt will also become more evident in the third step, but it holds a secret power over your standard sponge or mitt. It's especially beneficial for Tesla owners. The old mitt, I literally use it for wheel cleaning only, as I didn't want to see it go to waste essentially. I also think this is a great time to say that all the products and items that I use in this video will be found in the description of this video. Just click on my kit list link, then follow the car wash kit like so, and the products should have an affiliated Amazon link so you can buy them directly on Amazon by just clicking this link. So I'd say watch the whole video and follow these steps if you're interested in purchasing any of these items detailed in this video. Once your buckets are filled up like so, you want to set up your pressure washer. If you don't currently own one, it doesn't need to be all singing and dancing. This is literally a small portable pressure washer I've been using for around two years now. 
It's also competitively priced for a Bosch product, but effectively I picked it up because it wasn't overpowered, it's portable, and it comes with a snow foam attachment, which we are conveniently about to use for step two. So step two, whilst the car is bone dry, we'll smother the whole car in snow foam. Every wash that I do starts with a snow foam from Valet Pro. It really has become a staple to the beginning of every car wash that I do. Snow foam itself is widely available across different brands, and you may already have a go-to brand, but I use Valet Pro for the distinct reason that it's pH neutral. So it's super kind to the paintwork, which can be particularly important if you do have some sort of paint protection too, which I don't. But get the wrong snow foam and it can actually affect your protection. I briefly mentioned this before, but you need some form of snow lancer for this. And I use the bog standard one that came with my Bosch compact pressure washer. It's not perfect by any means, but it does the job just fine. I can proceed to lather this on all over the car. Don't be shy, cover the whole car. The purpose of the snow foam is that it will start breaking down that dried on dirt dust and also those dried on bugs in my case. But you'll also see further down the line how this pays you dividends in respects to time and effort. When it comes to the shampoo stage it's important to note and I stress this does not replace the car washing process but it in fact kick starts the whole process in style. And I tend to leave this on the car for up to and around five minutes then I move on to the first rinse. And like most of these products you mustn't leave the snow foam on for too long and let it dry out. Leave it on for only a few minutes and then proceed to rinse. This outcome of the rinse is far from mesmerizing as it probably shifts just around 5 or 10% of the dirt only. But what's really important is how easy it will be to remove the remaining dirt in the next stage. Step 3 starts with that shampoo and the two bucket wash system that I mentioned earlier. So going into further details as promised, if you're not familiar with this two bucket procedure, the purpose of this is to try to eradicate the possibility of dragging grit from the washing mitt all over your paintwork. Just the thought of it now makes me tense. All those times I washed my old car as a one bucket man. Anyhow, to start, we dunk the clean mitt in the plain warm water and I try to gently massage any dirt off the mitt, even using my other hand to assist at times. If you are purchasing a bucket for this purpose, I'll add a dedicated bucket to the kit list that has a purpose built grill inside the bucket. And this will assist with the grit removal rubbing process. Whilst I don't have that now, any attempt will help reduce the chances of cross-contamination and smearing of grit over the paintwork is a win over a one-bucket method. And I think, crucially, the evidence can be clear to see at the end of the process. Compare both of your own buckets after emptying and you should see the grit and residue in the previously dirty water and that's when the real, aha, my old one-bucket method could have been better. So using the two bucket process, we start first with washing the windows all around, including the roof, just the upper part of the bonnet only, and the upside of the boot. I start here because there's less likely to be nasties such as grit and dirt here. It's all about reducing the chance of smearing something from say the door sills to the glass. And it's literally a numbers game and I find the reduced risk approach works for me. When using the mitt, we mustn't press down with too much pressure as the sitting dirt is already brittle from the snow foam. And the combination of the shampoo will break that dirt down. If the dirt suddenly sticks to the mitt and you are applying a lot of pressure at the time and you're just pressing that into your paintwork, say hello to micro scratches or swells. So, I've learned to let the products do the hard work, save your elbow work for later on, as in later in the process folks. After all the windows, just the very top parts of the bonnet and the boot are done. We proceed to rinse the whole car down. My focus can then turn to the doors, but reserved to just underneath the windows, for which I can only explain as the upper parts of the panels. There is an aero line or a crease in the door that helps divide or separate this second shampoo section from the third and final shampoo section, which ultimately is the most dirtiest part of the car, where there's an increased probability of cross-contamination. For out the whole shampooing section, keep using that two bucket method religiously as we are likely to see more dirt and grit the lower we get on the car. So you should be visiting the buckets more frequently as you get to the second and third stage of the shampooing process. And when it comes to the second stage, we also clean the upper parts of the wheel arch, more around the back of the car and using the bumper as another separation line. And we'll do the same with the front of the car too. Before I can introduce the mitt's secret weapon, we wash down the shampoo efforts again. Now we can focus on the dirtiest parts of the car being the back and front bumper and the side skirts. 
Here on the back bumper, we can see how dirty the car was and how utilizing the shampoo and the snow foam combo ensures you need minimal pressure during your strokes. Even on one of the dirtiest parts of the car, just a few pressureless strokes will be enough to break down the dirt. And this is the dividend part that I mentioned earlier. We continue this around the lower parts of the wheel arch, around the side skirts of the car and underneath that aero line of the door now before moving on to the part where this mitt really comes to life and why it really stands out ahead of all the others for me. On the reverse of the mitt, we have a soft mesh like design and that has been specifically designed to remove bugs. And with Tesla's having next to no grills, I use this part of the mitt to help remove the bug splats in a more effortless approach. Remember, if I use the conventional side, it would require more effort or product to remove. And we really don't want to be pushing into the paintwork. So the mitts can help with the removal process with less pressure applied to the paintwork. There are bug removal products available if you live in areas more prominent than me. However, as I haven't seen the need to use one myself, and thanks to the mitt, I won't be recommending a product for that purpose. Anyhow, all I need to do is wear the mitt in reverse and I'm going to apply pressure from just my index finger to the bugs. This ensures I'm not tempted to scrub hard and let the strengths of the mitt do the hard work here before we do a final rinsey rinsey and we can move on to step four. Now, for this step, I understand some individuals and professionals start the whole process with the wheels first. I mean, who am I to say that they're wrong for doing so? I'm probably wrong for doing it towards the end, but I prefer to do it this way. I find that I use separate products for it and it allows the heat to remove some of the standing water as I do this step. Anyhow, I spray my dedicated wheel spray to help remove the dirt and grime from the inside of the alloys and the wheel covers. A few cheeky squirts all over the wheel and the side of the tire is all it takes and then I grab my old spare Meguiar's mitt and then I start to agitate that spray and residue evenly all over the tire and the wheel just to get a nice even coverage. Then at this point, I can take a small break as it soaks in and it gets to work. For me, that was a monster break. However, I waste little time on a break as there is an important task that remains. I must clean the wheel arches and this step is more crucial in the wintry months as all sorts of gunk and grit can sit inside the wheel arch. I previously used the old Meguiar's mitt all around the arches, but I've since resorted to a specifically designed stick which I find helps remove the dirt from all around the arches much easier. For some reason I find the highest point of the arch the worst for dirt as it's easy to see that clumps of dirt actually falls down in the process as a result of agitation. To think it was hidden in there all this time as well. Some of you may be tempted to even skip this step however for me depending on the angle and it's even worse for the front arches because the exposure of a turned wheel for example. But if you just catch a dirty wheel arch, for me it's like not wiping your ass, then wondering why your fresh clean undies have brown skid marks. Trust me, it's a small thing but you definitely rest easier knowing you wiped your car's ass, I mean your wheel arches. Then again I give it a full clean treatment as I poke the nozzle of the pressure washer up here too. However, I pay extra attention not to spray the paintwork as I'm just extra cautious here. I don't want to take the paintwork off from just being so close with the nozzle. After all arches are clean, if it hasn't done so already, I tend to spray any wheel cleaner off at the same time to finish off this step. Now with the washing step complete, we can then move on to towel drying territory. And I've had these three Glart super absorbent microfiber towels for over two years now, and I can't recommend them enough. I wash these towels after every car wash as they suck up the water just as you'd want them to. And I start off with the windows first and then I move slowly down just like the previous car wash procedure, remembering to swap the towels in between each stage. Oh, don't forget to open the boots and your doors just wipe down the residue water that gets trapped there. And if you don't, it's like forgetting to clean your armpits. Just please don't be that guy that forgets to clean the armpits. Step six is probably my favorite step. For today's video, I'm coining this as the tire love juice. Previously, I have referred to it as the hydrogen peroxide of teeth whitening, but for your tires. Essentially, Meguiar's tire gel will turn those clean but dull black tires into juicy, glossy black wheels. This not only allows your wheels to pop, I think it brings the whole car alive. I mean, take a look at this comparison. It speaks for itself. Look at the difference from just one coat of tire gel. This not only has visual benefits, but I understand this helps prevent sidewall cracking too. Before we apply the tire gel on the applicator, ensure you have a Glart microfiber towel to hand. Wipe your tire and your wheels down, just like my son did here, 
and I think he did actually did a really thorough job as well. He must have learnt some tricks from his daddy. Anyhow, just square the tyre gel onto the applicator and then rub that directly on the side of the tyre only. If you get this stuff on your alloys or your paintwork, remove it with the microfiber towel ASAP. And if you feel you want a second coat of the stuff, you can do the remaining wheels and then apply that second coat. The final step before bringing the super clean Tesla mini montage is bringing the windows back to life. I invested in this Valley Pro window cleaner last year sometime, but recently I introduced a fish skinned microfiber cloth. Again, all this gear is on my kit list, but this combination is another level when it comes to just working. One thing that has caught me out with glass cleaning before is don't use this in direct sunlight or you will get smears. Unfortunately, I learned this the hard way. So just spray directly on the window, apply the coverage with the first cloth, and then you wipe it off with the other cloth. And there's literally no messing around with this combo. The cloths are just really the missing ingredient for me in order to get good results with that minimum effort that I desired. And once you've done that, it's done. Now it's time to show you the mini montage of the end result that you've been waiting for. As you can see, my dual dirty car has been brought back to life. I showed you every step and product that I used to get here. I don't have any ceramic coating or PPF, literally just the bare paintwork from the factory and I still got these results. So I'm hoping this video has inspired you to upgrade your washing method or change or upgrade one of your existing car washing products. If you're starting from a fresh, hopefully this has given you some motivation that an average Adam like me can get favorable results too with just the right process. If you haven't done so already, please let me know what your thoughts are on my Tesla Model 3 car cleaning process. Are there any products that I haven't used and you'd swear by? Alternatively, if you're not sure what to comment and you want to let me know you got this far, you can simply comment, I wipe from behind too. And I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for doing so. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it with anyone or a beneficial group that may find this video useful. I have a missing part to uh, a new parcel that I received the other day for my Model 3, and that's going to form a second part to an older video. So that should be interesting and should hopefully be an exciting video for sure. Anyhow, you folks have been great as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.